questions and then we'll, we'll have we'll frolic among the telescopes right up front come on up well is the universe still expanding and is the universe still expanding it is expanding faster than ever before and it's getting bigger and emptier that's the universe now in this space that it hasn't covered up yet what's there right Oh, you mean, well, we don't, it's expanding into a higher dimension. People say, if it's expanding, what's it expanding into? A higher dimension than anything we are part of right now. That's what it's expanding into. That'd be cool to go to those other dimensions. We don't know how to do that. We're too inept. That's a good SAT word, inept. It means unable, okay? We are inept at stopping the oil leak. Okay? That's how you use the word inept. Okay? The design of that was inept. Uh, if the clouds were not there, I was given a list of what you would see. So I'm going to tell you what you would see. It's in my pocket. Let's check it out. This is like standard hit list for, uh, what happened to the list? I remember it. This is gum. Of course, it's eclipse gum. Of course, it's a astronomy thing. Um, I mean, why not? If it was not eclipse, what other gum would you be chewing? Orbit. Orbit, of course. You see? Listen, cosmic words are all through our culture. Just get used to that. Car names? Saturn car? The Mercury car? I'll take the Ford Focus. We'll do some focusing there. We'll take that. We, uh, what else? There's the, the, um, Subaru. Subaru is what they call the Pleiades in Japan. Subaru is a small cluster of stars visible typically in the winter skies. And those are those stars on the front of their logo. You ever see those little, uh, pattern on the, named after something in the cosmos. Is there a car named deoxyribonucleic acid? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Pulsar watches, Quasar brand TV, those hours. <laughs> we'll give them, that's fine. Um, oh, so in the list, I, I, I remembered it. I was looking for it, but I, I can't find the list, but... What's that? Oh, the Sirius satellite radio, that's right. The symbol for Sirius is a little dog. Sirius is the brightest star in the night sky, and it happens to be the eye of Canis Major which is Latin for big dog. And so they have a little dog as a symbol, Sirius the dog. Um, and uh, Okay, so while I'm remembering the hit list, just some quick astronomy humor. Uh, always marry an astronomer because you know where they are at night. Okay, that's one. <laughs> just, in, I'm just telling you, you know, that's how that goes. Um, so things you would see tonight. Uh, Saturn is up, my favorite planet. I was awestruck the first time I turned my small telescope to the sky to what I thought was an innocent star, but in fact, turned out to be Saturn. Uh, the moon rises later tonight, uh, more like midnight, a little later. Jupiter rises around midnight as well. Venus is setting about now. Venus is the most off-mistaken object for a UFO. <laughs> now, the U just means you don't know what you're looking at. Unidentified, period. Doesn't mean it's an alien visiting from another planet. What does the U stand for? Unidentified. You don't say, I saw a UFO, it was an alien in space. No. The you meant you didn't know what you were looking at. Stop the sentence there and get on with the next problem. <laughs> Venus is so bright, it rivals the brightness of planes coming in for landing. Now, you would see Venus over New Jersey, where UFOs visit all the time, right? <laughs> they, <laughs> and it's near Newark Airport, especially this far south of Manhattan. And so, but it just doesn't come in for landing. It just floats there. So people say it's hovering, and then it takes on some sunset colorations, and people say it's got funny colors. There's a story of, in New Jersey, of police on their recorder, on their, what do you call this, the, um, the radio, tracking a UFO. And they, said, and they said it was dodging left and right, and they were trying to follow it, and it turned out they were on a curvy road. And this was just, and so, so, they thought Venus was doing that, but they, this is... <laughs> Any 
Yeah, so you got that. Uh, if we clear up a lot, there are stars up there that are double stars. One of my favorites is called Albirio. It's in the constellation Cygnus the Swan. If you have extraordinary imagination, you will see a swan. <laughs> if you're just regular, it just looks like a, a bunch of stars in the shape of a cross. So one of those stars is a double star, famously uh, captured in the Star Wars series. That we show a double sunset. It turns out planet orbits are not particularly stable around double stars because you, you don't have a gravitational allegiance and basically planets get flung left and right. Bad place to look for planets would be double star systems. But it's pretty nonetheless. Albirio, one star is very hot, the other is cooler, and so they glow at different colors because they are different temperatures. It's very, very a striking double star. In the universe, Things that are hot are blue, things that are cooler are red. Quite the opposite of what the artist would have you know on the canvas. And I will end with a poem that I composed about colors in the universe. The colors that an artist would use compared with the night sky. Are you ready? Yes. On canvas with paint in the artist's school, it is red that is hot and blue that is cool. But in science we show as the heat gets higher that a star will glow red like the coals of a fire. Raise the heat some more and what is in sight? Behold, the star is bright white. But the hottest of all, I say unto you, is neither red nor white when a star has turned blue. There you have it. Well, thank you all for coming. I feel very host-like because I'm born and raised in New York City. My first night sky was actually from the Bronx. Do we have Bronx in the house? Okay, I got three, four people from the Bronx over here. Uh, and I saw nine stars from the Bronx. So few that my first visit to the Hayden Planetarium, I was certain it was a hoax. I know how many stars there are in the night sky. There are not this many thousand. There's nine. And later I would visit dark areas and recognize that, in fact, the Planetarium was capturing the sky as it was intended to be seen. And to this day, in an embarrassingly urban state of mind, with my access to the highest of mountaintops and the clearest of skies, I look up at the night sky and I say, it reminds me of the Hayden Planetarium. <laughs> I know, it's embarrassing, because that's the real sky. But that's what it is. I mean, you're a city kid, that's how it goes. But I was fortunate to have access to the cultural offerings of this city. And if you live anywhere in the area, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, continue to take advantage of that. It's the uh, greatest city in the world, and I don't think I'm biased in making that assertion because eight million other people and the surrounding folks are here. So thank you all, and is there another announcement? That we How have? about one more hand for Neil? And all of our presenters this evening.